Hey, and welcome to another coding interview question. And today we will be going over another question that I was asked, what is SDLC? Okay. Now I, given this is more of a DevOps question and I, even though I've only ever applied for software engineer roles, I was asked this once and to be fair, whenever you're working as a software engineer, you're going to be following one of these models and you know, one that you might see more prevalent nowadays is agile. Agile is based off the SDLC model. So we're going to get into it and we're going to explain what it is. So, you know, in case you were asked this in an interview. All right. So what is SDLC? Well, first off, it stands for software development life cycle. But what does that mean? Well, essentially, as you can see here, there are six stages or phases, depending on what you want to say of this cycle. Now, this means that from beginning to end, there are these steps that you will go through to accomplish something. You'll have a product that needs to go from the creation all the way to landing it in production for the customer to use. So let's go over the steps now. Right, stage one is planning. Okay. This is crucial because without planning, you wouldn't even have anything to develop, right? So what kickstarts the whole process of this SDLC? Well, the customer, okay. When you're working for a company, there's, you know, the company exists because they have customers that the company offers some product for that they use. Okay. So it starts with the customer, right? They need something, you know, it could be adding a feature to the software. It could be a huge feature. It could be modifying something. Uh, it could be that something isn't quite working as intended. So they need to review it and uh, fix to the way you need to fix it to the way the customer needs it to be fixed. Okay. This is normally relegated to business owners and product owners, and you as a developer, uh, won't won't do anything with this. Okay. You won't really know what's going on, um, until it comes down to you in a later stage. Okay. But this is really where, um, the planning and the analysis of what needs to be done is going to be done. All right. Essentially a decision has been made somewhere that there's a need for work and the business owners and the product owners, as I mentioned, they'll come up with the planning and the requirements needed. Okay. And that's going to move us on into the next stage, which is defining the requirements. So here's where teams will come together to define the requirements of this new need uh, for the project. So anything it needs, maybe you need something to do with the database, uh, maybe it's security, maybe it's something adding libraries, uh, maybe it's changing. It'd be something as simple as adding an input field on the UI or it could be something much larger, um, like adding a whole new service to the product. Now I'm not going to get too much into agile or waterfall or any of the SDLC models, uh, but typically the product owners and the business owners will have to have a good understanding of the need from the customer so that then it can be brought down from them. It can be brought down to the team lead and then eventually it's going to make its way to the developer and you as a developer will create whatever it is that the company needs for their customer. Clearly defined and documented requirements help out tremendously at this level. Okay. Because if the business owner or the product owner don't have a great grasp of exactly what's needed, then it's going to be hard when it trickles down to you as a developer to really understand how to test, um, how to, uh, develop exactly what that customer needs. Okay. But this is, this stage is just defining the requirements needed for this new feature or service, whatever it is for the customer. And then this is going to lead us into stage three, which is designing the product architecture. So what does it mean to design the product architecture? Well, in the last stage, we define the requirements needed for, uh, for this new need or task or whatever for the customer. And now we want to break that down into tasks, or if you're an agile stories that are needed to create the product that will hopefully be organized and set up for teams. So each developer knows what they need to code or develop. Now these stories or these tasks need to really be broken down, 
um, into small bits, not one huge chunk. You don't, you know, you don't want a task that says create the service, you know, well, what all comes with the service, right? Is there a new database or new tables that need to store data? Um, what's the UI, what are the UI components? Um, obviously then at some point you're going to have to link up the back end and the front end together. You know, what all does this comprise of? All right. So we're going to break what we defined as the requirements. We're going to break them down into different tasks, like hopefully small enough tasks for the developers. Okay. Wrap up this stage. This stage is we're breaking down the requirements that were needed into tasks. Okay. And this is going to lead us into the next stage, which is develop. Okay. This is where we actually develop the product. Now the fun begins. You get to start developing finally, uh, whatever these tasks or stories were. And this is where you now finally come in at stage four. Basically you just want to start develop coding, developing whatever it is that was required, that was defined in the requirements and then designed for the product architecture. If you have great design document beforehand, this can make things simpler for you and make your life easier. But trust me, that's definitely not always gonna be the case. Uh, actually, probably more often than not, you won't really have a great design document. Okay, you're gonna have to figure things out. You might have to ask more questions, which is perfectly okay. If you don't understand something, remember this. If you don't understand something, always ask questions. But let's get back to the topic. If you're agile, you know, just remember whenever you're developing, things change, right? Requirements change. Maybe you're trying to develop it and it doesn't make sense. Or all of a sudden, um, you develop it and test it. And then that needs to change for some reason. Okay. So be open if you're, especially if you're agile to development will change. That's what it's all about. And this is going to lead us into stage five, testing your code. Now, to be fair, you should already have been doing some sort of testing in the development stage. You don't want to develop all this code. You don't have any syntax errors and assume it works, right? That's don't do that. <laughs> you want to do some testing, at least like baseline testing to make sure that what you're doing, uh, you know, works. Okay. You don't have to test for all the edge cases when you're developing, although you want to, you know, be on the lookout for those. Um, but when the testing phase, maybe you want to do some more edge case testing. Um, you want to have documents ready, create some documents because, I will say, always create documents to show the work that you've done and that you tested your code. Okay. Just make sure you always do that. Now in some other SDLC models, there will be just like, especially like waterfall, there is a specific testing phase. Okay. So this stage is here cause you should be testing, but depending on what model you're using, it may be used you know, interchangeably with like develop stage or maybe other stages. Okay. Cause uh, a lot of like, if you're doing agile, you're always going to be, you know, the idea is that you could always be changing and you adapt to that and you'll develop and test again. Okay. So just because this is a separate stage doesn't exactly mean you're only testing here and then you don't test any other stage. All right. But here, this is kind of after you developed and done some testing during development, you want to finish your testing and then we're going to move on to stage six, which is the final one. Um, this is when you deploy everything into the market and you maintain it. All right. So this is the deployment stage. This is when the new development that you just created, all the code changes you've done for the customer goes into production. It's going to be used by the customer now and hopefully they're happy with it. If not, you will get another task in the future to fix a bug or they will fix something about it. However, when you, when we've done the planning, um, with the business owner and the product owner who met with the customer, you know, normally that'll be hashed out. But again, if you're with an SDLC model, like agile, things change and you just have to develop it of some more, test it again and give it to the customer. So to recap, okay, just remember if you're getting asked in an interview, you know, you say there's six stages. Now you will see other, if you look up images or you look up SDLC in general, in Google search, there might be only like five phases or may, sometimes I've seen seven. All right. So 
these six though are pretty much what you're going to be doing. All right. So you're going to have to plan. I mean, you got something from the customer. Um, and once you have that need for the customer, then you can move on. Okay. The next thing is you want to define the requirements for this need. Okay. What, what exactly is it that they want changed or added or whatever, um, for their software or whatever product that you're giving them to use. Next one is design. Okay. So we want to design now, um, this new feature that they want in the product. Okay. So now let's split everything up into tasks, um, and make clearly defined tasks, hopefully, uh, for our developers. Okay. So the next one is implementation. Well, this is when you actually develop, all right? This is when the, you as a developer will actually take this design and these requirements and code it. Okay. That's simple. You're This is where you code this is the fun part where you actually get to code something. And, um, in stage five, testing and integration, as it says here, that four and five can be are interchangeable. Uh, but five, you really want to make sure you have your test documents, um, to show that you just didn't code and didn't did zero testing, right? Always save yourself, have documents to prove what you did. And then finally six, um, this is when what you did goes into production and you, um, it says, no, it says maintenance, but it's kind of, it's all the same, right? So you push your code into production for the customer to use. And yes, you will be maintaining it. Um, but the customer can come back and say they want something else. Well, start at stage one again, you know, then go through all the phases, you know, and these for all the tasks that you'll see as a developer, you know, this all starts at planning, right? When I got asked this interview question, I was simply ask, what are the stages? So planning analysis, design, implementation, testing, and, uh, production or maintenance. Okay. And then I got asked, well, can you, and then I got asked, well, what do you mean by implementation? Well, then I explained, well, this is where the developer actually codes and develops the requirements needed, uh, based on a, uh, the work from the customer or, or some feature that they wanted added or modified. Uh, you may get asked a question about one of these specific uh, stages in the SDLC model and just kind of re re go over what we talked about here. And I think you'll be fine. Okay. They're not going to have you go super into detail. All right. But in another video, I could go over agile or waterfall even, um, or some of these other models for you because that may lead into, uh, well, are you familiar with agile? Well, agile is an SDLC model. Okay. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions or if you got interviewed already and this was part or they had some relevant question to this, uh, post that in the comments and I would love to hear from you. And if you have any more questions about the SDLC model in general, um, also make comments and I will respond and we can get through this together. You'll do great in your interviews. I know you will. I'll see you next time.